indeed from inception. The bank was undercapitalized. Consequently, the bank has been heavily reliant on borrowed funds, often at high interest rates, for on lending. This reality has negatively impacted the ability of the bank to be competitive and earn adequate interest rate spreads on its loan portfolio. The initial inadequacy of the capital base of the bank has negatively impacted the bank's ability to mobilize low-cost lines of credit from multilateral funding agencies since most multilateral funding agencies are not prepared to accept a debt-to-equity debt ratio position of more than four times. Over the last two years, the government of St. Lucia has assisted by making a direct equity injection of EC 4.2 million in cash. An additional contribution of approximately 12 million in land has been vested in the SLDB. While additional consolidation of the capital base of the SLDB is required, this first round of capital support has allowed the bank to enhance its debt equity position and thereby successfully negotiate lines of credit with the, SL, with, the SL, with the SLDB and now the National Insurance Corporation. Notwithstanding the poor capital base, the Solution Development Bank has been a catalyst for development over its 15-year tenure. Disbursing approximately 7,000 loans valued at over $370 million. The bank continues to support sectors such as education, agriculture, and low-income housing that are often neglected by the mainstream financial situation. My mainstream financial institutions. The SLDB partnership with the National Insurance Corporation has yielded fruitful outcomes. With the SLDB successfully managing NIC lines of credit totaling approximately $53 million, all directed towards impactful economic and so social projects. This col collaboration has facilitated numerous projects and programs that have significantly contributed to the nation's economic and social fabric. Currently, the principal balance remaining on loans from the NIC is EC $29.3 million. SLDB track record if NIC is unblemished, with a zero default rate, showcasing the bank's effective fund management and adherence to its financial obligations. To, to effectively deliver its mandates, the St. Lucia Development Bank requires low-cost funding, which is vital for its sustainability. The loan of $20 million has been granted as an interest rate of 3% subject to review in 2025 and every fifth year thereafter. The loan will be repaid over a period not exceeding 20 years with quarterly payments of interest during the first three years followed by quarterly installments of principal and interest. This favorable financing arrangement will enable SLDB to unlend these funds at competitive rates ensuring the bank's ability to continue its crucial role in, an, in national development. And Mr. Speaker, I want to reiterate that the government is not borrowing the money, for its, the SLDB is borrowing the money from the NIC and the government is just guaranteeing it in case there is a default. And from the history of the, of the bank, you'll see that there's been no default as far as it's borrowing from National Insurance Corporation. Mr. Speaker, this line of credit Secured by, secured by a government of solution guarantee is planned to bolster the key sectors that are pillars of the economy. The funds are expected to be utilized across various sectors, enhancing the economic landscape and providing tangible benefits to the people of St. Lucia. This strategic allocation will focus on the following. Housing, affordable housing initiatives. Mr. Speaker, you may recall in my budget address this year, I indicated that this year would have been the year of infrastructure. And I, was, and I mentioned several times that infrastructure does not only include roads and bridges and culverts. It also includes houses and hospitals and schools, etc., Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, 
talking on hospitals on Friday in this very room, we're going to finalize the funding for the St. Jude Hospital. Mr. Speaker, so the 20 million EC dollars will be used, one, affordable housing initiatives. Mr. Speaker, the loan will finance land purchases and the development of affordable housing projects, including low to medium income families with access to self-sustainable and cost-effective homes. These projects will incorporate green technology we encourage this project to incorporate green technology and innovative building solutions, setting a new standard for residential home development in St. Lucia. That's, Mr. Speaker, the banks intends to have a special outreach to public officers, policemen, teachers, civil servants, nurses, doctors, with special emphasis on first-time homeowners. As part of the program, as I announced in my budget, public servants will be eligible to 100% loan financing from the Solution Development Bank. <coughs> and a grant of $1,000 to pay their legal fees. Further, Mr. Speaker, the government will exempt stamp duty for any mortgage less than $400,000. The, the person who is taking a mortgage will have no stamp duty to pay, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, here is the package for housing, the package for public officers help you for housing. One, once you qualify, you get 100% financing. Two, you get a contribution of $1,000 on your legal fees. And three, you pay no stamp duty on the first $400,000 of that loan, Mr. Speaker. And those uh, around this table will tell you what $400,000 exemption from stamp duty means to the pocket of the public officer or the person taking the loan, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mr. Speaker, we are at the advanced stage of negotiations with the government of Taiwan to further support efforts in enhancing the low, low and middle income housing in St. Lucia by providing us with another line of credit. But that will come in the near future, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this loan will also be used to improve the MSMEs, the medium, small, and micro enterprises, Mr. Speaker. As you know, they are the backbone of our, of our economy. Mr. Speaker, it will assist with the present initiative from the Ministry of Commerce to empower entrepreneurs to expand their operations, to innovate and create jobs, and drive economic growth and stability, Mr. Speaker. And the impact on employment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you may recall that the last statistics from the Department of Statistics showed that St. Lucia's unemployment was 11.5%, the lowest in the last 15 years. Mr. Speaker, the investment in agriculture will also, investment in agriculture, Mr. Speaker, will also be, funds from, will also be used for, from that $20 million, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the loan also will be used to help in bridging finance. You know, a number of contractors get loans from the government or from other sources, particularly from the government, and they do not have their initial capital. So part of that money will be used to fund them, and then, as, and then as soon as the way it works, Mr. Speaker, they, that the bank funds the, the, the capital, or funds the, inf the capital for the infrastructure, and when the government is paying the contractor, they pay the bank, the bank take, take the money, plus interest, of course, and gives the contractor the rest. So that, that is called bridging finance, Mr. Speaker. So part of that money will be used for that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with that guarantee, and I want to note it's a guarantee, the government is not a payment on the, from the consolidated fund now. Only if the SLDB, SLDB does not pay 
does not meet its obligation to the bank, to the NIC, then the government will, will, will chip in. I want to make it Pelosi declare. No payment will come from the consolidated for now. It's just a guarantee. Mr. Speaker, this injection into the bank will add to the government's policy on housing, Mr. Speaker. You may recall that VAT was reduced, was removed from essential building materials, just reducing the cost of building to the consumer because the 12.5% VAT was removed from essential building materials, Mr. Speaker, causing, causing the cost of building where VAT was removed to be cheaper because there's no VAT on these on these items, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, you see, this is the comprehensive um, policy of the government as far as housing is concerned, Mr. Speaker. We need to ensure that every solution has access to affordable housing and every solution has a hope that someday they will be able to own their own property, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that's not all what the bank is doing. The bank launched an educational fund, and I'm sure the minister will mention at some point, to help in this education revolution that's happening in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. A revolution in education in that there's a line of credit for people who have absolutely no security, Mr. Speaker. Poor people. Low-income people, Mr. Speaker, who before could never have the opportunity to get an education. They don't have the opportunity to go and study in Canada or to go and study anywhere in the world, Mr. Speaker. They, they, they had no money. But with that line from the bank, with no security, the only security they need is their brain and their commitment and their discipline. Their commitment and their discipline they will have an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, once they meet the criteria to go to study. And that is added to the 50 <coughs> first generation scholarships where the students began school at Monroe College yesterday, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, it is clear, Mr. Speaker, it is clear that this government, starting on the foundation laid by the previous Labour Party government under Kenny Anthony when we made both universal primary and universal secondary school education available to the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> and Mr. Speaker, that's not all. That funding may be used also to enhance preschools because this government believes that education must start from both. Therefore, we have made available to every early childhood institution in St. Lucia that is not government funded a grant of $2,500 Mr. Speaker. And we further decided that we would help in the school fees for these children who attend these early childhood, these early childhood centers, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that they get an adequate foundation in education so they can make themselves available, so they can be prepared, Mr. Speaker, for the world of work. So in the four TVET schools that we opened on Monday, they can have a place to be in these schools, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, you see the holistic development of education, the holistic development of housing that this government is pursuing. So, Mr. Speaker, you can understand the, the, the desperation. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I am very pleased, Mr. Speaker, that the NIC, Mr. NIC, Mr. Speaker, you, you, know, you know the NIC has its highest level of, of voluntary registration in its history. And Mr. Speaker, these things are not things I, that's written on Facebook, you know. These are facts. 
These are not opinions. That's not the rewriting of history. These are facts, Mr. Speaker. Tangible facts that can be verified. Not people's opinions or people saying things that they want to write because they have access. These are tangible facts. The NIC has its the highest record of contributions ever in this, Mr. Speaker. Plus the fact that this government, in the last budget, we have ensured that this government has absolutely no liabilities to the NIC, either in terms of rental or in contributions from its workers, Mr. Speaker. Because part of the large debt portfolio of the government in the last budget was payments due to the NIC. And by our management of the economy and the expansion of the economy, Mr. Speaker, we can pay these debts to the NIC, hence protecting the workers, the workers, Mr. Speaker. Plus the fact that the NIC can afford, apart from the increase in pensions of 4% earlier, the NIC can raise pensioners from $300, those who used to get $300 and less, to $500, Mr. Speaker, and they got paid last month. And it's my intention to find out from the actual scientists whether it's possible to further increase these salaries next year, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I want to ask all members to support this, this, this motion, Mr. Speaker, because it will add to the, to the, first of all, to the housing stock, Mr. Speaker, and lead to the economic expansion the growth that the, that economy is experiencing, Mr. Speaker, will continue this year. And it's forecast, Mr. Speaker, that this economy will grow this year in excess of 5%, Mr. Speaker. Probably more. But this is what is forecast, Mr. Speaker. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs>